Hey, what's up guys? Mike D here. You know, my parents have been telling me that I made it through my sophomore year of high school, and yet I don't really remember that happening. It must be some kind of continuity error in my life. Continuity is the consistent existence of something occurring over a period of time. When watching any kind of media, there is bound to be continuity somewhere. There are some shows that have every episode pick up where the events of the last episode left off, which, in my opinion, overcomplicates the events for casual viewers of the show. There are some shows that are episodic and can have overarching stories take place over a few episodes that are spaced out among each other. There are some shows that are very self-contained but do have some references to past episodes here and there. And there is the rare show where everything is completely episodic and has no continuity at all. I think we've all been there at some point, watching an episode of Spongebob where a character says or does something, and then watching a future episode that completely contradicts what was said or done in the former. People are like, That can't be true, I remember watching the episode that goes against what they just said. This is a bunch of bulls- But in my opinion, stuff like very little continuity makes things easier for casual or new viewers to watch an episode of the show. The most important events of the series happen in Season 1, and there's nothing that happens that changes those aspects of the show. There are some big things that can add to the lore of the show, but that's pretty rare, especially in the modern seasons. It's not completely likely that somebody would have seen every single episode of the series and remembers what happens in every single episode, with a rare exception. Even with a show that goes on as long as Spongebob, it is possible for the writers to forget everything that is said in every single episode. However, every franchise has its own appeal, and every episode of Spongebob being completely self-contained is part of its appeal. Of course, there will still be somebody who watches a modern episode and realizes that there was something that was said that contradicts their favorite episode of the series and go on a rant. I thought it'd be fun to point out some continuity errors in the show. Now before we get started, allow me to throw out a preface. I know doing this is extremely nitpicky, but this is all about having fun. Although I have noticed these continuity errors in the show myself, they don't ruin how I feel about the show. I still love it despite the writer sometimes intentionally going against other events in the show. Also, the official Spongebob YouTube channel has posted a video acknowledging the 13 biggest continuity errors of the show. So if the official YouTube channel can point out these errors in the show, I think it's okay for me to do the same. Of course, there are some episodes with easter eggs and references to previous episodes, but that's a topic for another time. Finally, this isn't a definitive list of every single continuity error in the show. With the series being in seasons 12 and 13 as of November 2020, it would be damn hell to talk about all of them at this time. So who knows, maybe in the future we can return to this topic or go in depth at some of the biggest continuity errors of the show. But for now, it's time to be a spoiled nitpicky brat and pick apart my favorite show. Let's start off by talking about the series antagonist, Plankton himself. There are two notable errors about Plankton. First, it's apparent that his size changes throughout the series. In season 1, he is more consistently tiny, and in future seasons, there are some times that he is notably bigger. The only time he is consistently tiny is when he's tiny enough to fit in another character's hand. This might be intentional in order to make him easier for the viewers to notice him. Additionally, in the Spongebob Squarepants movie, Plankton has stated that he has never even had one customer. However, in a few episodes like episodes 238, Chum Bucket Supreme, and 242, Chum Caverns from season 6, 250, Greasy Buffoons from season 7, 337, Chum Fricassee from season 8, and 380, Lame and Fortune from season 9, Plankton is shown with a crowd of customers. Of course, you can make the argument, oh, these came out after the movie, but that's invalid because Steven Hillenburg himself has stated that the movie takes place after the series. Proof of this is that there is no Krusty Krab 2 in any Spongebob production that was released after 2004. Every modern episode coming out has canonically already happened in the Spongebob universe, even the episodes that aired in 2020. Of course, Plankton saying he's never had a customer is most likely him complaining about his life, and whenever he did have customers, his success would always be ruined by the end of the episode. One of the most infamous continuity errors involves Patrick. 
In episode 44, Something Smells, Patrick says that he doesn't have a sister. In episode 292, Big Sister Sam, Patrick has an older sister that visits him in that episode and goes over a brief backstory about her. The nerve of the writers having a family related continuity error. I justified this error as Patrick was freaking out about being ugly and forgot that he had a sister. Additionally, since they've been apart for so long, it is possible to forget about some of his times with her and since he was freaking out, people tend to forget things when they are panicking for one reason or another. It's true, that's why I hate exams. I panic too easily in the heat of the moment and have forgotten even the answers to the most obvious of questions on the exam. Additionally, does Patrick even have a nose? While he is not drawn with a visible nose and has wished he had a nose on a couple of occasions and got a nose stitched onto his face in episode 210, No Nose Knows, throughout the series he has been seen being able to smell even without a nose. I ain't got nothing on this one. Everybody loves the part of episode 51, Patty Hype, where Patrick states that he can't see his forehead. However, in episodes 238, Chum Bucket Supreme, and 360, SpongeBob Your Fire, he is shown talking to his forehead when it grows a face. Something that everybody likes is the inconsistency of having fire underwater. There are several episodes where there is some kind of fire in Bikini Bottom, whether it's a campfire or some kind of natural disaster. The only time where it was actually questioned was in episode 55, Life of Crime, where Patrick asks how there can be a fire underwater, and it goes out at that exact moment. Other than that, there were fires going on throughout the series, and nobody questioned why they were happening. Now let's talk about a few errors regarding Spongebob himself. Episode 62, Squirrel Jokes, states two things about Spongebob. He knows about fleas, and he has no bones. Both of these were contradicted in the future. In episode 176, A Flea in Her Dome, when he finds out Sandy has a flea, Spongebob asks what a flea is. Maybe he forgot what a flea is, but it doesn't make much sense when he would talk about them on stage in a comedy routine. Also, for the point about the bones, there have been several occasions where Spongebob has been shown with bones, even though he clearly stated he doesn't have any. Spongebob's strength is also weird. In episode 5, Ripped Pants, he can't even lift a stick with two marshmallows on the ends, but in episode 78, The Fry Cook Games, he is shown extremely buff and can wrestle Patrick. And that's saying something since Patrick himself has shown to be quite strong. Another point is that in episode 35, Rock Bottom, he is shown tying his shoes and speaking the steps out loud. But in episode 42, Your Shoes Untied, less than 10 episodes down the line, he is shown to have forgotten how to tie his shoes. I was just getting ready for the day, but how do you put this belt on? I remember I did this yesterday, but I forgot how to do it today. Let's move on to the epitome of every business CEO, Mr. Krabs. In episode 94, Can You Spare a Dime, he and Squidward get into an argument when Mr. Krabs can't find his first dime. When his dime was found at the end of the episode, it was shown as a giant prehistoric rock in the shape of a dented dime. Fast forward to episode 388, Mutiny on the Krusty. His first dime was shown again, but this time as a regular old dime. Another point of interest is the Krabby Patty secret formula. In episode 128, Enemy in Law, Mr. Krabs states to Plankton that the secret formula is an old Krabs family recipe, whereas in episode 156, Friend or Foe, the secret formula was developed over a fight between Mr. Krabs and Plankton when they were kids. Me personally, I felt that the family recipe excuse was Mr. Krabs saying that he confided the formula to his family and trust them with the secret and they are the only other people who know about what it is other than Spongebob and Mr. Krabs and he said this to Plankton as a threat to make him stay away from his mom. Now let's talk some continuity errors relating to actual episodes not necessarily about a specific character. One of the most notable instances happened in season 2. In episode 54, pre-hibernation week, Spongebob was helping Sandy prepare for hibernation and doing extreme sports with her, and she fell asleep at the end. Only three episodes later, in episode 57, Survival of the Idiots, Spongebob and Patrick went to Sandy's house and found out that Sandy was hibernating. This plays out as if Spongebob never knew about hibernation and as if he never did extreme sports with Sandy, and it was clear that he didn't like the extreme games in pre-hibernation week. 
In episode 56, Christmas Who, nobody, including Patrick, knew about Christmas until Sandy told Spongebob and Spongebob told the rest of Bikini Bottom. However, in episode 6, Jellyfishing, when Squidward comes home, Patrick yells, Merry Christmas! Well, at least this time it's November, so I have more justification for wearing this hat. In episode 15, Jellyfish Jam, the jellyfish are shown to hate Squidward's clarinet music. But in episode 427, Squid Noir, the jellyfish are shown to like Squidward playing his clarinet. Throughout the series, Squidward's clarinet has made different sounds when he's playing it badly. It never sounds the same. So maybe the jellyfish like the sounds he's playing in Squid Noir more so than Jellyfish Jam. He also doesn't play through giant speakers that are cranked up to the max in Squid Noir like he does in Jellyfish Jam, so that could be why too. In episode 196, Stanley S. Squarepants, Mr. Krabs met Spongebob's cousin Stanley, who bears a striking resemblance to Spongebob. Later on in episode 412, Cave Dwelling Sponge, Spongebob gets arrested and Spongebob thought he was mistaken for somebody else, but Mr. Krabs says that nobody else even looks like Spongebob, despite meeting Spongebob's cousin Stanley. Of course, the most likely explanation is that Mr. Krabs forgot that he met Stanley, which makes sense since they met such a long time ago, and Stanley only appeared once. Now here are a couple of small errors. In episode 50, Wormy, Spongebob and Patrick have no idea what this butterfly is, but in episode 4, Bubble Stan, Spongebob blows a butterfly-shaped bubble and doesn't freak out. Of course, he and Patrick may not know what it is and like it because of its shape. I mean, Patrick thought the elephant bubble was a giraffe. In episode 101, Party Pooper Pants, Spongebob is shown using a payphone to call his house. Later on, in episode 361, Lost in Bikini Bottom, Spongebob sees a phone, but is confused by the fact that it requires money to use. Man, I thought I was forgetful. Now let's talk about some locations in Bikini Bottom. Starting off with Patrick's Rock, the inside is rather inconsistent. In episode 11, Home Sweet Pineapple, this is all that is shown under Patrick's Rock. That's it. Episodes in the future show that there is more to Patrick's house. Sometimes there's nothing more than just a hole with nothing else in it, which is still more than what's shown here. Other times, there's a small den, and other times there are multiple rooms like a kitchen, bathroom, and a bedroom by looking closely here, all with furniture made out of sand. Additionally, there's Mrs. Puff's boating school. Most episodes show only one classroom with multiple desks in it. On a couple occasions, specifically from episodes 86, The Bully, and 104, New Student Starfish from Season 3, it is shown to be a full-fledged school with hallways, lockers, restrooms, etc. So those were just a few continuity errors in the show, but far from all of them. I definitely missed some, but like I said, I can't fit all of them in a discussion right here, right now. As you can see, I've gone over a lot, but don't take that as a sign as I don't like the show, because I do. I just wanted to have some fun by doing this. Like I said, in the future, we can probably return to this topic because there are a lot more continuity errors in the show. But right now, I remember the events that happened during my sophomore year of high school after all, so it turns out there was no continuity errors in my life about that after all. Although now I can't remember my freshman year of high school, come to think about it.